In this session, we're going to explore the Smart Pinch Brush in the custom section of the tool panel when you are working in the Sculpt workspace. I need to note up front that it is only in surface mode. By way of contrast, we are going to first look at the Pinch Brush and see how it differs from the new Smart Pinch Brush. The main difference is Smart Pinch is going to look for areas that are more concave or convex and automatically extrude them accordingly. Whereas the pinch brush will do that based on the default behavior or if you're holding down the control key, which will invert the action and it will also work on any part of the surface, including flat areas like this, which you will not get with a smart pinch brush. So again, they actually have slightly different purposes. In many cases, you will typically already have some type of angular shape along the surface where you may want to apply some type of sharpening effect. In such a case, Smart Pinch might be your preferred brush to use. All right, so let me go ahead and use the Pinch Brush. In a flat area of the model, let's say, for example, I want to create some light uh, wrinkles on the forehead, I would want to use the Pinch Brush, probably. So I will go ahead and just begin to drag. And you can see it's created. Let me check my brush alpha. Okay. And let's go up here up top. Okay. And maybe one more here. And lighten it up a little bit. Okay. Now, I should mention with the pinch brush, you can adjust the strength of the pinch, but it also indents by default. If you need to extrude, you can simply hold down the control key. This is really good for creating, as you can see, things like eyebrows and hair. And then just let it from the control key, and now you're pressing inward. We'll now turn to Smart Pinch and see how it works. You have more options because it's based on the base brush in the custom section and it's designed to allow the user to add modifiers to change its behavior. For example, with a degree parameter, you could modify the curve to adjust its strength level along the length of a stroke. You may want it to be more aggressive at the beginning of your stroke and less aggressive at the end and so on. You can use the currently selected brush alpha or create a custom one with this dialog. The video covering the base brush will go over this and other options in greater detail. Suffice it to say, you could add a modifier here. You can see the angulator is the one that's actually chosen. The default setting is for no buildup, but you could choose no buildup or optional buildup as well. You can also auto subdivide, meaning it's like using the crease clay brush where it, it dynamically tessellates as you brush so that it ensures you have plenty of resolution to create creases and wrinkles and things of that sort. I'll leave that unchecked for now because I think we have enough, but I can inspect the wireframe by hitting the W key and zooming in. If I want, I can use live clay also to apply a bit more resolution in the area where I think I'm going to need it. I first want to ensure that use current alpha is checked so that I can use this sharp brush alpha. Okay, so I'll do the same thing right here. And then Right here where you have a more convex shape as a brush, respects that convex shape. We can do that here as well, lightly press. But again, if we were trying to create some new wrinkles here, that would probably not work very well. So we would need to switch back to the regular pinch brush. All right, so that's going to conclude this quick look at using the Smart Pinch Brush in 3D Coat's surface mode. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.